Sure. Chairman Gardner, Ranking Member Markey, Senator Coons, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to testify about Tibet to the subcommittee. I would like to request that my full testimony, including three attachments, which is the statement of his own the Dalai Lama on his succession, a uh, report by the Foreign Correspondents Club of China on access to Tibet, as well as a joint op-ed by 30 pa European parliamentarians on the issue of reciprocity with China be included in the record. Without objection. Thank you so much. My testimony will focus on the 60 years of political subjugation of Tibetan people by the China that includes a consistent pattern of violation of their fundamental human rights. I'll outline China's attempt to isolate Tibet from the rest of the world and why, show why Tibet matters uh, in the context of the Indo-Pacific region. In 1959, China took over complete political control of Tibet. Since beginning March 10, 2019, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people began marking the 60th anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising, the escape of the Dalai Lama and his eventual crossing into freedom in India, and the establishment of a democratic governance system which is known as the Central Tibetan Administration. In the past 60 years, the Dalai Lama had the far-sighted vision to undertake initiatives and establish institutions in exile that have empowered the Tibetan people to preserve and practice their religion, tradition, and way of life. At the same time, the Dalai Lama has continued to work for a peaceful resolution of the Tibetan problem. In this regard, his steadfast, steadfast commitment to keeping the Tibetan struggle non-violent in the face of tremendous challenges remained an inspiration to non-violent movements throughout the world. In Tibet, the Tibetan people have endured 60 years of political subjugation. Chinese leaders say they seek stability in Tibet, but they strive to achieve it through an iron fist rather than understanding the grievances of the Tibetan people and finding ways to address them. These hardline measures are sowing seeds of instability in Tibet, exemplified in acts of protest, including self-immolation. Access to Tibet is one of the issues that is facing uh, by all concerned. The problems faced by journalists wanting to cover Tibet has been clearly outlined in a position paper issued by the Foreign Correspondents Club of China, which I mentioned earlier. On March 25, as mandated by the Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act, the State Department submitted to the Congress a report on U.S. access to Tibet. We would like to commend the State Department for the report which finds that China systematically impeded Americans' travel to uh, Tibet in 2018. But reciprocal access to Tibet is an issue faced not just by the United States. On March 14, more than 30 parliamentarians across Europe published an op-ed saying Europeans should also look at the issue of reciprocity and pass a similar legislation. In the past 60 years, the Chinese authorities have adopted, adapted a policy from a policy of total destruction of a Tibetan religion and culture to one of controlling them to serve its own political objectives. The case of China wanting to appoint the next Dalai Lama is a clear example, as they tried to do with the issue of the Panchen Lama. The Dalai Lama has categorically maintained that only he can make a decision on his reincarnation. In 2011, he came out with a formal statement explaining the reincarnation system and how he intends to go about on the issue of his succession. By wanting to select the next Dalai Lama, the Chinese government aims at extending its control on Tibetan Buddhism in, in the Indo-Pacific region and with clear geopolitical implications. If not challenged vigorously by three countries, this decision could affect the religious freedom not just of the Tibetans, but of millions of followers of Tibetan Buddhism worldwide, including which affects the United States' uh, security interest. A majority of the several hundred Tibetan political prisoners who have been detained uh, have, have been done solely for the assertion of their identity, whether calling for the protection of their culture or displaying their reverence to the Dalai Lama. The fact that even after 60 years of occupation, the, the historical bond between the Tibetan people and the Dalai Lama remains strong is a reminder to the Chinese government that they have failed in their policies and they failed to understand the Tibetan people. The Chinese government knows that there's a problem in Tibet and only during the lifetime can there be a possibility, lifetime of this Dalai Lama can be, uh, there be a possibility of a lasting solution. The Asia Reassurance Initiative Act uh, rightly places the issue of Tibet within the parameters of U.S. security concerns in the Indo-Pacific region. In this concern, uh, context, the issue of water in Asia is something that can be taken up uh, by the United States Congress. The Tibetan Plateau is today the largest repository of fresh water, and China's attempt to use, manage the Tibetan resor water resources has implications on downstream uh, countries. Just the other day, the Atlantic Council came out with a report on Himalayan 
uh, Asian water that uh, recommends that the United States create a coherent Asia policy that includes water as a pivotal uh, element. I have some recommendations. Uh, first, highlight Tibet uh, as a key factor in the Indo-Pacific region strategy. Update and strengthen the Tibetan Policy Act, which ha is a comprehensive expression of United States support for the Tibetan people. Uh, they ha the Congress should think of uh, incorporating recent developments, including clarifying U.S. policy on the issue of reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. And the administration should be asked to perceive United States' long stated goal of establishing cons consulate in Lhasa. And finally, the United States should incorporate water security into the national security, security strategy and explore using platforms like the quadrilateral security dialogue and the Lower Mekong Initiative to create awareness about China's usage of Tibetan water and its impact on the Indo-Pacific region. Thank you so much.